gamers, gals, non-binary pals. You may have seen the Twitter thread earlier of everyone going full chatting mode over Ursartix, and now we're gonna watch the video that started it all. Ursartix failed cards, archetypes, and sometimes mechanics in Yu-Gi-Oh! by the greatest VTuber simp of all time, the Duel Logs. Let's see if it was truly as heinous as everyone thought. How can an archetype have a draw 7 spell card and still be trash? This is a direct quote from Ursartic players on almost every Reddit forum. Ursartic was Konami's attempt to bring the Dark Synchro Summoning method seen on Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds to life. Like my decisions, Dark Synchro Summoning does everything completely backwards by using the total difference between a tutor and a non-tuner, instead of adding the total sum of them like the standard Synchro Summoning method. While this idea is entertaining, we all have one question to ask. Will it be any good? You've probably seen the name of this no. video already, so no more needs to be <laughs> the said. The answer is no. Let's explain why Ursartic's joined the failed card Hall of Fame. Ursartex debuted in 2021 in the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG set Ancient Guardians. It is so depressing how so many side sets just end up doing nothing. Like when you look at side sets throughout Yu-Gi-Oh! history, it's so funny how for most decks history, they've just been so ass. Ogdoatics, Dragon Maid, Ursartic, everything in Valiant Smashers. Like, do you know how much fucking support these decks had to get in order to be playable in some capacity? And sometimes it's not even those cards, it's just two of the good cards being splashed into a good deck. Main deck monsters in the archetype all bounced around being level 7 and level 8 monsters. The main deck contained 6 water monsters, all of which had quick effects that allowed you to tribute one other level 7 or higher monster in your hand to special summon them from your hand, and lock you out of special summoning monsters unless they have a level. The non-tuner Sartic monsters are level 7 beasts, while the tuners were level 8 beast warriors. The level 7 Sartics were Sartic McPolar, McBelis, and McTanis. All of the names translates to Archetype Doomed to Fail, or something about bears. Choose your favorite way to remember bears. them. When your Sartic McPolar is special summoned, you can add an Sartic card from your deck to your hand. When McBelis is special summoned, you can special summon a Sartic monster from your hand. Finally, when McTanis is special summoned, you can target a Sartic card in your graveyard and special summon it. The level 8s I mean, were Megapolar, okay so Megabelis, and Megatanis. Unlike their micro versions, the level 8s had effects to interact with your opponent and disrupt their plays if you controlled another Sartic monster. Megapolar lets you target a spell or trap your opponent controls and destroy it. Megabelis enables you to target one card in your opponent's graveyard and banish it. And Megatanis allows you to target an opponent's face-up monster and change it to face-down defense position. Literally, if these cards just removed the whole dark synchro summoning gimmick, or just removed the line of text that says you can't special summon monsters except cards without a level, if they just were just normal-ass cards, it would be at least fine. <laughs> but no, they had to lock you out of using these cards as good extenders and then they made the Horus cards. For their synchros, they were given three, with the central star being Ursarctic Polari, a level one synchro requiring you to send two monsters from your field with a one level difference between them to the graveyard. When Polari is special summoned, you can add an Ursartic Big Dipper from your deck to your hand. You can tribute a level seven or higher Ursartic monster to either add an Ursartic card from your graveyard to your hand or special summon it. Following Polari wow. is Ursartic Septatrion, their level seven synchro monster that could also only be summoned by the dark synchro. When it's face-up on the field, it negates face-up monster effects on the field who were special summoned from the extra deck if they had no level. Also, once per turn, you can add an Ursartic card from your deck to your hand if your opponent special summons a monster. Finally, Ursartic- Bat chest, I can search my Book of Moon! Ursartics, the real cashier counter. Grand Chariot was a level 8 synchro. It needed to be special summoned just like the other two Ursartic synchros. When it's summoned, you can target up to two cards in the field and destroy them. Once per turn, when a card or effect is activated that targets an Ursartic card you control, you can tribute one monster from your hand or field to negate it. Ursartic had a straight- We already had that effect, and his name was Karen Gorgon. <laughs> I think that came out literally 10 years ago. Forward game plan. Summon your level 7 and level 8 Ursartics and make Polari, activate Polari's effect to get Big Dipper, and then special summon another Ursartic tuner to synchro summon Septatrion, and interrupt your opponent by using the quick effects of the Ursartic tuners to summon themselves and activate their trigger effects. The four spell slash trap cards given to their archetype had the heart and soul of the deck. For Ursartic Big Dipper, once per turn, if your Ursartic monster would tribute a monster activates effects, you can banish a level 7 or higher Ursartic monster from your graveyard instead. And each wow. time a monster is special summoned, you can place a counter on this card. When your opponent special summons a monster while you control an Ursartic Synchro monster, you can remove all counters from Big Dipper to target one of your opponent's monsters and take control of it. Ursartic Slider was a quick play spell that targets one Ursartic monster that's banished or in the graveyard and special summons it, but it can't attack, and it's destroyed during the end phase. You can also only special summon monsters and levels for the rest of the turn. Ursartic <laughs> Departure ass. was their search spell. By discarding one, add two Ursartic monsters from your deck to your hand. 
If you attribute a monster to activate an Arsartic monster's effect, except the turn this card was sent to the graveyard, you can banish this card from your graveyard instead. Why does the card that's designed to make you go like plus two why why is it not even a plus two when you really think about it even if you add two cards you went dead even as well as the fact that the earth arctic still have to discard so you never even went plus two in the first place finally their trap card or sartic quint charge was a continuous trap that lets you pay 700 life points once per turn to activate one of its effects you could either add an earth arctic monster from your graveyard to your hand or tribute to Ursartic monsters, and if you do, special summon from your extra deck one Ursartic monster with a level equal to the difference in levels between those monsters. Wow, quick synchro fucking bear. Also, when your opponent's attack that destroys chest. your Ursartic synchro monster, you can activate this card's effect to have your opponent shuffle cards into their deck, so the total number of cards in the field, hand, and graveyard <laughs> is seven. The support sure. was decent for its first round. It had ways to make its boss monster, searches, and make polar and departure, and combo starters, and make Tannis and make Belus. Septon Trion was a great floodgate card that stopped the impact of Lincoln XEs that your opponent would summon or play. The level 8s interact with your opponent's turn and can interrupt their plays by popping spells and traps, flipping cards face down, or banishing key parts of your opponent's combos from the graveyard. Their field spell was also pretty good. The ability to use monsters from your opponent's graveyard as cost for your Sartix helped save resources and could double as a change of heart on your opponent's turn to keep. All this sounds good on paper. But if it were good, it wouldn't be in this video, now would it? Her Sartex monsters had simple requirements to summon, but cards. that didn't negate the fact that most of your summons were a minus one. You lost too many resources just to summon one monster. Just summoning two monsters from your hand on your first turn meant you only had one card left in your hand to play after using those two monsters. Not to mention that the conditions to be special summoned were cost effects, making going second dangerous. As a negated teddy bear, meant your turn was staring at the table. That's kind of true. The fact that like this deck cannot go fucking second to save its life is absolutely insane. When you kind of think about it, Urzartix were kind of like the predecessor for Pearly. Like it's a deck made up entirely of cards that minus one and ideally like replace themselves, except, you know, Pearly kind of did it good by not forcing you into that line. I kind of see it that way, except, you know, Pearly at least replaces the resources and doesn't make you fucking, you know, lose the game on the spot if you get fucking impermed one time. The fact that most of the cards, from monsters to searchers, locked you into monsters with levels, ultimately making links and XEs two of the best extra deck monster types and accessible for you. So you were stuck making Polari if you were going to do a pure Ursaric build, making the deck linear as a well-timed Ash Blossom to your Polari to go away access to your Big Dipper, which is your best, if not most critical piece of your combo to get to Septatrion and help with the suffering of needing extra level seven or higher monsters in your hand for Sartic Monster's cost effects. To make the deck even more fragile, the deck had no protection. Grand Chariot was the only card that granted protection, but that's if protection. your Sartics were being targeted. Nothing can stop you from getting Lightning Storm, Ultimate Conductor Tyranno flipping your cards, or getting your hard work Zeus into oblivion. Sure, your Ursartic tuners could be used as interrupt- Wait, you can't fucking Zeus. <laughs> you can't Zeus an Ursartic board. It doesn't have a level. Chat, go into the comments section of Duologues right now. Go full fucking nerd emoji. It's time. Option to hinder your opponent, but none of them really stop your opponent's effects from going off. Booking a card face down with Mega Tannis may stop an extra deck play or cause your opponent to use more resources, but it doesn't negate or remove the problem from the field. Many players tried to cover up Ursartic's flaws with techs that complemented the struggling archetype. One of the most popular engines used with them was the Deep Sea Diva archetype. As Deep Sea Diva fetched a level 3 lower sea serpent monster from your deck, allowing you to make link monsters without being locked out by your Ursartic monsters. So, you play D.Va and a card like Deep Sea Ministrel to make Christian Halky Fibrax, who Whee! was one of, if Helga not Fibrax. the most powerful Link monster back in 2021. And if you've been playing Yu-Gi-Oh wow. since 2020, you know precisely what this led into. Special summon your Despot 001, Link into Aurora Dawn, bring back 001, tribute tokens for Cult Wing, get back 001, and choose this single of your choice in the most powerful, boring, and overplayed combo in Yu-Gi-Oh history. It was so insane how just so many decks in 2021 were just hard carried by the Halka Rordon combo. It was the most obnoxious shit on planet Earth to be like against Ad Emancipator and like you stop everything and then they just like Oh, well, I guess I have a tuner and a guy I get special for free. Make Hulk? Regardless, splashing in the Deep Sea Diva helped her Sartix have a turn one play that didn't punish them as heavily and still let them with plays and resources they could follow up with without worrying about being locked out of using links. Sure, your opponent could use a hand trap and negate your Diva, but in that case, you could just continue playing your Sartix without the fear of being hand trapped. This could be said for the use of Lefty Driver and Righty Driver in the deck, which could be used for Halky Fibrax or Polari. 
Simply plain wow. righty driver activates effect to get lefty driver, and not activating lefty driver's effect increases its level to dark synchro summon into Polari. Hopier Squadron also saw some play within the land of Polar Oh bears. my god. It's a when everyone thought that Hopier Squadron was going to be like the bees and ease because oh my god, you could make a Herald of the Arclight, Bat Chest, and it just turned out to be the most mid shit of all time. Ability to special summon itself and use a monster on your side of the field to make a synchro summon on your opponent's turn makes it one of the most unique techs in Yu-Gi-Oh. Even though the deck can make dark synchros, that doesn't mean it's relegated just to make them. You can still make regular synchro monsters too. And with high level monsters in Ursartix, you can make the level 9 or level 10s on your opponent's turn. <laughs> you know, not Barone the Fleur. We're making Time Lord Progenitor Vorp Gate. It was far from complete, but with the access to Halki Fibrax and multiple ways to make Polari, players hoped that Ursartix would become a viable option to pick up. The cards in Burst of Destiny didn't give much in the hope department. In Burst of Destiny, the archetype received the most random and head-scratching support. Ursartic Drytron's normal spell lets you special summon one ultimate flagship Ursatron from your extra deck by banishing an Ursartic Big Dipper and one Drytron Fafnir from your hand and or field. If you control Why Polari or a Drytron Dry Thuban, you can also send a Dipper or Fafnir from your deck instead. It also had the same secondary clause as Departure, allowing you to banish this card from your graveyard so you don't have to attribute a monster from your hand for an Ursartic's monster's effect. Their new monster was the ultimate flagship Ursatron. This level 7 fusion monster at 2000 attack and 700 defense. It's always treated as an Ursartic and a Drytron monster. Once per turn, if another effect monster is summoned to your side of the field, you can add an Ursartic or Drytron monster from your deck to your hand. And once per turn, you can target one banished Ursartic or Drytron monster and add it to your hand. In one awesome. word, why? None of these archetypes <laughs> had any correlation Literally except why. that they were water attributes. Drytron was completely in the realm of ritual summoning, and Ursartix only cared about synchro summoning. Ursartix dry Also, they're not fucking water. Drytron's light. <laughs> Second mistake. Nerd emoji. Drytron required you to play a brick that gives no benefits in Fafnir, and cost you the Big Dipper, which is essential in the Ursartix combos. The payoff wasn't worth it either. The fact that you had to summon another effect monster to get its searcher effect made this card lackluster. The Ursartic gang would have to wait 6 months late for their next support in the TCG set, Battle of Chaos. What do you give an archetype that needs everything? You give it one card that solves nothing. Just one card, Ursartic Radiation. Which was their continuous spell that, on activation, has 7 counters placed on it. When an Ursartic monster special summoned from the hand or extra deck, you remove a counter to draw a card. Once per turn awesome. during your end phase, you can target an Ursartic monster in your graveyard and shuffle it back into the deck. Radiation sounds good on paper or in this case, cardboard. Although its effect that lets you cards. draw isn't once per turn, allowing you to draw up to seven cards and shuffle your materials back into your deck. The Asartic line didn't have any means to be able to special summon consecutively every turn due to the demanding cost to be summoned. Also, you can throw away the idea of playing multiple copies of radiation as you can only control one Asartic radiation. So, even if all your counters are used up, you'll be stuck with this card until it's removed from the field. It seemed that for every card you played in Ursartix, there was a heavy drawback for every single card. Playing a monster locked you into only so many level monsters. Your Floodgate boss monster stopped you from playing Links and XEs. And now you had a situational draw power that you could only control one of. However, with access to Alki Fibrax and Aurorodon, the deck still had plays to help it function. Anyways, Alki Fibrax and Aurorodon were banned in late 2022 in the TCG and the deck couldn't function without the world's degenerate combo available. Linear play, lack of resources to upkeep gameplay, and weakness to multiple hand traps made it unplayable. Not to mention their boards were still breakable because the archetypes still didn't get support to protect their monsters from destruction removal outside of Grand Chariot. It was all downhill for the deck, and the copium supply ran out to keep people interested in Ursartix. So, with its destiny bound for Duel Links and Master Duel, players decided to mark Ursartix as a fun deck to build for cheap. However, Duelist Nexus would finally make Oh my god, they got enough- How much support did this deck get? This is like, almost as bad as Gen X. Ursartix, the one thing they could never be. And that was playable. In the TCG set Duelist Nexus, Ursartix received one main deck and one synchro monster. Ultimate Bright Knight Ursatron Alpha, aka this name is really long, was a level 7 machine type water monster that was treated as an Ursartic and a Drytron monster that could only be special summoned by card effect. If you control an Ursartic or Drytron monster, you could special summon this monster from your hand. Then search for an Ursartic or Drytron spell trap from your deck to your hand. I think this is so funny that it took them almost a year and a half to print a single Ursartic monster that didn't require you to go neg in the process. Is that good support in a failed cards and mechanics video? This card was the extender that Ursartex needed. 
It was searchable due to counting as an Ersartic, was an extender with no cost, and search your spells and traps. You can now have two monsters on the field that didn't use so many resources you know, and fetch the combo pieces one. you needed without depending on what you draw. It's safe to say this card was a welcome addition to the deck that was desperately needed to make the deck consistent and playable. The final piece added so far to our Sartix was another good card. Our Sartix Polari Star was the new level 1 synchro monster that allowed you to tribute it and a level 8 Ursartic monster to special summon a level 7 Ursartic synchro monster from your extra deck, ignoring its summoning conditions. If you do, it also gains an effect that stops your opponent from activating the effects of monsters with levels that are special summoned from your extra deck. So not only will Septon Trion negate your opponent's monsters without levels, but it will also shut down the monsters with levels, wow. making their extra deck- the way how Konami solves every archetype ever. Just give them a fucking floodgate. <laughs> completely useless. It's unbelievable how sometimes in Yu-Gi-Oh, the worst decks have some of the most insane and powerful effects. Venoms have a monster that can win the duel with Venoms. attacks. Heroics were god-awful, but had an XCs that stopped your opponent from playing Yu-Gi-Oh. Now Ursarctics get to join the group of inconsistent decks with powerful monster effects. Did this support make the deck good? It's still a heavy no, but it finally hit a playable level. Ursatron Alpha was a powerful extender and searcher for the deck, and Polari made your Septa Trion the ultimate floodgate, until your opponent uses Lightning Storm, Dark Ruler No More, or Forbidden Droplets to field your kingdom come. Don't let that dishearten you, your deck is now playable, and that's probably the happiest way we can wrap up Ursartics. The new support did give a ray of hope to the Build-A-Bear deck. It won't be meta-defining due to its breakable boards and scarce protection, and the playstyle still makes you neg one if you don't have critical pieces like radiation to help you break even. However, the deck is still great for casual play, sneaking you some wins in Master Duel and all around fun, being that this is the only deck using the Dark Synchro mechanic. Maybe one day the stars will align and the Galactic Build-A-Bear will rise together to take over the Yu-Gi-Oh! format. That's not our job to predict though. We here at Duel Logs proudly introduce Ursartix to the Hall of Failed Cards and Mechanics. Update. My Ursartix king. actually managed to top an event in the OCG shortly after this script was written. Here's the deck list on screen. Chat, I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna build Ursartix in paper. I don't know how it's gonna look, but I wanna unironically end on Serpentron Pass. I don't know how I'm gonna make this deck work, but I wanna just fucking... <laughs> oh my god, this thing is so shit. If there's a deck which I could exemplify how terrible Konami is at making cards or <laughs> their general card design process. Just every Ursartic card is the prime example because it's either the most overtuned push support of all time or it's just dog shit. <laughs> Post your Ursartic deck list in the comment section down below. That's gonna be it for this video. Goodbye forever.